dairy reaper season is still just getting underway here in New Zealand. So here we are again for another reproduction topic. These are gonna be coming thick and fast in the coming weeks. So if you don't want to miss them, click that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it. That means you don't miss any new videos. Also helps massively to grow the channel. Anyway, let's get into it. Like many animals, the female bovine reproductive system isn't in a constant state of fertility. Instead, once a female calf reaches puberty, the different reproductive hormones that control fertility go up and down in a predictable, consistent sequence. In cattle, this sequence tends to take about 21 days or three weeks. During that three week period, there'll be a short window of fertility. This is when the cow is in estrus, or we more commonly call it in heat. This is the fertile window, which coincides nicely with ovulation. That is the release of a mature egg from the ovary. This is time so it's ready to be fertilized by sperm. And in this case, that's going to be either from a bull or an AI technician. This pattern continues indefinitely going round and round hence it's often referred to as cycling until this cow or heifer becomes pregnant. The whole system is put on pause during pregnancy and after calving there is a short hiatus before the system gets cycling again. As the PSM or planned start of mating approaches plenty of farmers will be watching their cows with an eagle eye for signs that they are cycling well and in good time. These signs include rubbing of the tail head, mounting other cows or standing to be mounted as well as simply observing the cows. Farmers will often use a number of different aids. These include tail paint, KMARS, scratch cards, and increasingly more and more sophisticated technology like collars, pedometers, and even ear tag sensors. These can all help with detecting signs of estrus or heat and therefore tell us these cows are cycling well and they are ready to be mated in good time. However, it isn't unusual for dairy herds to have a certain percentage of cows that don't start to cycle again by the planned start of mating. We call these cows non-cyclers. Any level is likely to impact herd reproductive performance, but certainly should be below 15%. As they're not cycling and therefore not going to be presented for breeding, they're going to lower the submission rate, they're also going to lower the conception rate, and therefore the non-cyclers are going to lower the six week in calf rate. And that last one especially is a critical measure of reproductive performance in block calving systems. We can actually break down non-cycling cows into a few different groups. The first group are those which are cycling but for which the heat was not detected. And that may be as simple as the farmers missed it, whatever technology or aids they're using, something slipped the net, this does happen. The other reason heats might not be detected and therefore cows are presented as non-cyclers is because these cows may only have had a silent heat. Now, 70 to 80% of cows with that first ovulation, that first peak in estrus show a silent heat. That's where there's no obvious in heat estrus behavior. Once we're done with them, we are on to the true non-cyclers. So these guys show what we call an estrus. That's literally a lack of estrus behavior. In New Zealand, this is the most common cause of infertility. The causes are many and they very often feed into one another. We'll cover these in a technical of their own, but broadly they relate to timing of calving, nutrition, and disease. You can see how these non-cycling cows would very quickly become an issue for the farmer. If cows fall behind and conceive later in the mating period, or if they fail to conceive at all, that means come next spring there are going to be fewer cows to milk and for a shorter lactation, at least in a spring block system where you have a universal dry off date. What's more, calving and mating both really busy, hectic time for farmers end up dragging out. That's in nobody's interest. Both types of non-cycler are likely to benefit from treatment and there are several different approaches to this. And guess what? We'll cover that in another technical very shortly. So that was a very quick introduction to what a non-cycling cow is. Again, we'll go into greater detail in some future technicals. I don't like to get too bogged down and end up with these videos being 20 minutes long. If you want to see those other technicals, again, hit that subscribe button, ring the little bell. If you enjoyed this video don't be afraid to give it a thumbs up leave me a comment with your thoughts if you're a farmer dealing with non-cyclers in your own herd your first port of course should always be your vet of course there's also some great resources i've signposted to in the video description other than that i'll see you next time